are you? In today's video, we are going to continue our conversations around the tools that can be used for data science. We have talked about Visual Studio Code. We have talked about AI Assistant in JetBrains. JetBrains. We have talked about AWS SageMaker Studio Lab, which was the last video. In this video, we will extend the conversation and take that to Google Colab. Now, Google Colab is an environment, is a complete data science slash Jupyter environment or interactive coding environment provided by Google. Really popular, but I'm going to show you some of nitty gritties around it, how to get started and you know, what are the different options you can choose from, how to maybe use Google Storage, Google Drive as a storage when you work with uh, Google Collab to you know, save your files or upload your data set and whatnot. This is going to be an interactive video, so stay tuned, watch till the end. Quick check, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do, please give me likes, let's hit the like button, that really helps and promote my content to other people like you. Let's start. So when you go to Google Collab, you really just need to hit Google Collab on Google and the first link that comes up is this, collab.google.com. It There's another link which I just saw, which I've never seen, I'll probably check that. Collab.google. Yeah, this talks about the product page. So quickly checking what is this? It's a hosted Jupyter notebook environment. Uh, which requires absolutely no setup, is completely free of cost for GPUs and TPUs, and it's specially designed for machine learning and those kind of education. So if you are you know, learning, figuring out, reading, these are the places to go. This is a good website. If you want to check out some of the samples and uh, you know find some curated notebooks around different use cases and stuff. I'm not gonna get into detail into this. Uh, you can check these out because there's quite a few of them, but I'm rather going to be talking of the product itself. So this is how you are greeted with. I will probably start with few interactive ones. So we will do this in order and I would stop till the fourth one. I don't want to do all of them like, you know, how to work with BigQuery data table files, etc, etc. There's tons of different examples that Google has created, which you can, uh, you know, use and leverage for your project. So we'll, we'll go about them one by one. So the first and foremost, when you get started, this is how you are greeted with. This is the environment. You have standard. Okay, let me change probably the theme or let me try to zoom it a bit. Yeah, this is slightly zoomed in version, so it's better. So I have a dark theme as always in most of the places. I'll go to notebook settings and see if I can change. No, no. Yeah, it should be somewhere here. Yeah. So I can save and then it will probably not change for all the places. So yeah, this is uh, an overview of collaboratory features in Google Collab. So you have the file menu, you have a lot of different options to select runtime and all and that's the core option that I really want to talk about. So if you see top right, here's a connect option, click on it. And what this does is behind the scene, it spins up a container or your environment for you, which is completely dedicated to you. Now, this environment, it, it takes like a minute or so to get started, but once it does, you can, you know, see what it what it is and what other resources you have. So you have about, you know, 12 GB of RAM, you have about 107 GB of disk space and uh, it has Python 3 Google Compute Engine enabled and it's showing resources since a certain time. You can upgrade to Collab Pro, which is another feature which we will talk about at the end for this, right? And uh, this is a CPU type runtime. You can change it to multiple different options. I'll show what they are. You can change it to a uh, hosted runtime where you have a runtime on Google Collab. It will now show nothing for me. Uh, you can have, let's, let's go back just a second. Let it come back. Yeah. You can change the runtime type to couple of options. You have Python and R both options are available. You can change it to uh, CPU T4 GPU and you can have TPUs also. If you are in premium tier, again, these options get enabled, but, uh, I think you would know if you are an advanced user of Google Collab, you must already be familiar with this simple interactive environment. These are called cells. Uh, there's different kinds of cells. You either have text or code code is usually tagged as code text in various places. Sometimes it's called text. Sometimes it's called markdown. 
it's very straightforward you have something running you have a is equals to 10 a and you just print it the way you can add or remove cells is you can click plus clo code or plus text google has simplified it you can add uh you know standard python stuff a lot of pre-existing stuff is baked into it for example if you run like import time sleeping sleep for a while interrupt done sleeping so right now it's showing sleeping it will wait for 30 seconds and it will just probably say dance sleeping we'll come back to that you can execute regular shell commands under the exclamation mark so if you just do nls slash pin and do a shift enter it will give you a list of all the directories within that and the the way it works is the run happens in sequence so uh, and if the sequence is not completed the next will you know probably be not be still in a running state it will be in a waiting state so the moment done sleeping was completed uh, you know you this was this was executed and you have tons of different things that are uh, present in the bin file we don't need to go deeper into this this is just the folder structure <clears throat> all right and you can close the output by just clicking close uh so you can select you can just clear the output button by clicking close like i did uh you can uh, also connect to github or you can do different sort of processing you can have magic commands like html you can have uh, svg elements look at again this is a complete html embedded it supports automatic completion of the code uh so the moment you do np dot it will uh, it should give you all the auto populates and if it doesn't do you can do it by command space or control space so that's uh, just a usual notebook feature but autocomplete is very good in google collab you can do formatting stuff like that standard stuff here you can have interactive plottings which is very standard to jupyter environment i don't need to really talk about it there's integration with drive uh, so you can do a lot of sharing of code uh, from here uh, to do, 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 do. yeah you can save a copy in drive you can save a copy in github gist or you can save a copy completely in github so you can do direct integration with github uh, that's good if you want to share this notebook you can click on share and uh, this notebook just becomes uh, you know publicly shareable version if you want to share it you can limit access obviously you can go to settings and you can control who uh, uses it etc etc some other features about how to do github integration you can go to settings which is top right and you go to github and you authorize with github and then it will be able to access seamlessly which is very straightforward you can have some power levels uh, set up uh, which is just typing uh, editor settings can be updated if you want to use a different font or stuff like that you can do that you see the dog up there that's what i was talking about uh the themes etc etc you can uh, do that you can have custom snippet url which can also uh, which is a very useful feature sometimes and uh, that's it from an overview standpoint let's move over to markdown we'll go again and convert this editor into light mode so that it's better visible uh, markdown is very straightforward if you're not familiar with markdown it's probably uh, you know what developers use to uh, write general text when they are not coding it's very straightforward hash uh, headings are entered as title so so single hash would be heading one double hash heading two and so on and so forth or uh, you can have paragraphs you can have text you can have italics bold stuff like that so it's basically text formatting you can put code blocks here so for example uh, if you put it like this uh, do -do 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 -do. where did it go yeah there isn't a runtime connected so i'll just connect it so what happens is if you it it knows it has syntax highlighting uh specific to a language that you specify so for example this block that you see it once i run it oh, why is it uh i don't know why it is why, okay all of, okay now i realize this it's all under single uh block so you see this this is what this is corresponding to this this is the right one to run yeah so it's it will just print or it will put whatever code uh, you have here so you can probably put a you can do another print a plus b you can define a you know def uh, font etc etc and on the right hand side you can see that it's coming as 
code. So this is good for code highlighting if you want to paste a code or snippet, etc. Et Move on to doing charting. Uh, simple stuff. Charting is also relatively standard. Uh, it's it's Matplotlib is most common library and it's kind of baked in. So you can have line graph examples like this. Uh, if you run something without allocating, it's smart enough to know that you are trying to run and it will allocate it. So that's good. And then you have all sorts of plot available like bar plot, histograms, scatter plot. You can import custom libraries like Altair or, or you know Seaborn and things like that that you want to use it for plotting. There's tons of plots possible. Pretty much all kinds of plots are possible. Uh, you can do subplotting, which is like this. You have multiple different plots. You can have 3D plots using matplotlib, uh, which is something like this. 3D bar plot. There's tons, tons of example using plot. So Altair is slightly better look and feel wise. Uh, and it's also installed and enabled by default. So you have an interactive plot if you want, which you can use and move around. And you can actually, I, I think you can, yeah, you can save as an SVG. You can save as PNG. You can see the source. You can open in Vega editor, which is, uh, you know, more of a, uh, a language used for graphing and stuff. So when you run this, it will give you this plot, you, which is it's, it's just for tweaking colors and stuff if you want it. Uh, you can see Altair example gallery, for instance, if you want to have more uh, knowledge of or, or, or understanding of plots. I'll just give you a quick snippet as to what Altair is capable of. It's a quite uh, rich and exhaustive library, very similar to Seaborn, I think. Uh, just more interactive, I think. Uh, yeah, so you have line chart, you have all sorts of chart circular plots, scatter plot, trending stuff. Like this is a very common type of plot where you have a confidence interval plotting, etc. You can do tons of distribution plotting. You can have table plotting like an hexabin or uh, you know correlation charts and stuff maps are really good and if you go much more deeper like advanced calculation for stock prices etc so you have candlesticks charts that you can use uh, so tons of plotting and charting available with an altair will probably do a different video all right moving forward moving forward to using local files and different sorts of disk and uh, i would say local file system so let's connect so there's a package okay it has too many sessions yeah so since i'm on a free account it's giving me this error uh, so i'll just terminate other session and now connect so now it will allocate so google.collab is a, a package in itself and you can import files using you can do file upload etc etc you can download files using uh, google collab import files you can actually mount google drive uh, something like this so if you run this uh, connect to google drive it will give you this option it will connect to your user account and it will create a folder inside your google drive and from there you can just directly read and interact so i'll just click here uh, it will ask for permissions i'll just allow it and uh, this should be complete it's I, I think it's going and uh, creating uh, some stuff with m in my Google Drive. Yeah, done. Uh, so you have Mount Drive there. Okay, let's run this again. I think it did mount already mounted. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, Drive is here. So you see my drive and uh, there's a lot of stuff in my drive, which is standard to me. Let's just run this. And uh, so it, it created a folder called slash content. I will probably check that. Yeah, this is the folder. There's a lot of stuff inside content and uh, it created something like a my drive. I don't know where this is. So. I'm having a hard time finding it, but uh, I'm pretty sure it exists. I don't remember the exact path, but it has uh, it has this mounted. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure about it. I've used this in the past. So so basically, what it has done is it's created a file in my one Google Drive, and it's now interactively using it. So uh, where is this beneficial? This could be uh, it could be a great place if you have a data set and you want to mount it or you want to save checkpoints and all. So you can just use it as a local storage. Uh, you can have a PyDrive also, which is a different way of uh, 
using authentication with google drive uh, that's another you have a drive rest api which you can use uh, you can create a new drive file uh, which is just a new file from your code using this notebook so this this there's couple of ways of doing interactiveness with uh, google file you can also work with google sheets if you want so if you have some data in google sheet and you want to interactively read it into uh, your uh, notebook to perform some analytics yeah this is a good way to do it yeah so that's about how to uh, use uh, google drive let's move on to using pandas uh, let's do a connect let's quickly go back to light mode sorry about this all doing all the time yeah pandas is baked into it so you have just create some pandas data frame it will do that and there's some interactive plotting available for example you can you know see it as a more like a tabular format or you can you know do some sort of charting on it i don't think this is going to generate any chart but uh yeah okay it did so it's gested some charts using i think some sort of an ai uh, i have no idea what these charts are so there's some value which is you know there's just two value in the table so that's what it is showing okay so in it's showing index uh there's distributions there's sarah uh, all of the names it has taken as a uh, uh, basically categories so yeah, it's 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 kind of pointless but you do get the idea right it does suggest some charts out of the box which is which is a good uh, thing to do you can do regular expressions you can do uh, variable search you can do tons of stuff that you regularly do with panda uh, you can play with time you can uh, this this all sorts of formatting options present in this that you can uh, do with pandas you can do it in google collab yeah so so that's it that's what i wanted to talk about a uh, good set of features about uh, google collab yeah i recalled uh, please do subscribe to my channel just remember I forgot that i need to talk about the pricing so there's a uh, this google collab has multiple plans it started as a free uh, tier but as your computing needs grow you can have different uh, options around that and uh, so initially they started with pro but i think they have uh, multiple options now so you can pay as you go which is 12 dollars for 100 compute units or 60 dollars for 500 and these compute units expire after 90 days you don't need to have any subscriptions the gpus are just faster or you can do a monthly subscription which is pretty much like 12 dollar a month close to 12 dollar 11.79 and you get the same features uh uh you have some more options available such as code generation and ai enabled auto complete which is in google collab pro version uh i think this is useful i did give it a try for a month or so but i don't use that it that often so not very fruitful for me the pro plus is you know more is is geared for premium users i think 400 compute units uh for a total of 500 per month Uh, compute units again expire after 90 days there's some sort of a rollover policy that they have the gpus are much much more faster and premium gpus and you can actually uh, you know uh, notebooks will continue running for up to 24 hours if you uh, close the browser which is a very uh, much needed feature if you are running something as a job or you have a long training running on so yeah that's the premium version for it if you are interested probably you'd know but there's better and alternate uh, data science environments that you can buy get if you are going paid version so yeah that's it that's all about the video thank you for watching please do subscribe bye bye